Hey everyone, welcome to the Costume Jewelry Chronicles with Lynn and Carrie. Each episode we will feature a new vintage costume jewelry designer and talk a little bit about jewelry reselling. We hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, it's time for the jewelry call this week. We're going to talk about Victorian jewelry today. Um, but first, does anybody have any sales they'd like to share from the last week or any jewelry questions that they want to run by us or just jewelry chitter chat, I guess? Janine's with us today. I don't know if you remember Janine Lynn. We, uh, I interviewed her in text group well, once upon a time ago. And she shares some amazing finds with me. She uh she's got some pretty good honey holes where she lives. So she, the, she gets some the Juliana lady. She and had she, Juliana. Uh, yep, she's got all sorts of beautiful things. And she has mini horses. That's Aww. what she's doing right now. She has mini horses. Um when you get a break, Janine, you feel free to plug your great jewelry YouTube too in here. You can drop a link if you want, because it's fun. She shares her finds. Um, I don't know what I've had this week. That's um, I have a Trafari set up for auction right now. It's at like three twenty nine. It's stuck at three twenty nine, but hopefully, I think it's eighty five watchers. So I'm hoping that means somebody will bid it up at the last time. Yeah, so it sounds like it. That's a good sign. Yes, I hope so. It's uh, it's kind of stuck where it's at, and then I haven't listed the other Juliana sets that I found because I want to. Um, give a give it a break to spread out the really good stuff. So, right. Well, you guys can. I had, uh, maybe, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I had the best weekend I think I've ever had. So awesome. I made some changes on Saturday because sales were just pathetic, and these changes I made apparently worked. Or I started making them on Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday. And Saturday's when it kind of kicked in. And I think I s shipped out 40 or 42 this morning. Wow. And that was Saturday, since Friday? Sunday, Monday. Since Saturday. I shipped out Saturday morning. Awesome. So this is from Saturday afternoon till t yesterday. Excellent. Yeah, it's been pretty strong over here too. It's um I've had I've had some pretty strong uh strong sales for for jewelry lately so it's been a good um not a lot of real high-end stuff but just really solid consistent um i've been shipping 20 to 30 a day pretty consistently and that includes saturdays and sundays because i don't ship but i do ship because otherwise i get all overwhelmed and hate it so um i think shipping's terrible so i go ahead and get stuff rounded up on saturday and sunday i did sell a dior necklace for 140 and uh, I sold a Heidi Doss brooch for 130. Um, I sold a sash pin for that was what I was gonna. Oh, and I oh, and another Heidi Doss necklace for 95. Heidi Doss is always my my ace in the hole every week. But I'll share my um since we're talking about Victorian. I don't know that this is Victorian. It's probably no, I don't know. I'm not uh, good with my my periods. I guess here um. But it was a pretty old sash pin. Even if it's not Victorian, it's cool. So we'll look at it here. It sold for 140. It was just an old. It was really well constructed. Not a huge sale, but it was nice. Oh, that's a nice sale. Yeah, what's the back look like? It was an old two pinch, I think. Yeah, no, it no. is. is it? It's a yeah. handmade. It so is early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was old. It wasn't in like perfect condition or anything, but it sold pretty quick. Yeah, I believe so. So you can go ahead and start. And then I will say that every time we do. Here, I'll pull up lint. Um, every time I do a deep dive, I am always just baffled about how much I don't know, like, in that subject. So, oh, that's beautiful. I remember you telling me about this, this etched Baltic Amber piece. That's really nice. Yeah, I and I paid up for it. 
at the time and I should have never paid that much, but I had it up at a high price and I finally lowered it this weekend and it sold almost immediately. I did sell it for like two seventy six. Yeah, but you can pay up for something that you sell for over two hundred dollars. I mean, yeah, but I bought this at a gem show and she was pretty much retail prices. So I had to group of several items together to get her down on anything. And I still, I barely made any profit on this. Like I probably made 20 bucks really? overall. Yeah. That's really it was funny. a bad purchase. Yeah. Well, we all have those. But it's, it's gone. I'm glad. And I got $300 almost. Well, not quite after eBay fees. What'd you pay for it? I don't want to say. <laughs> well, if she only made 20 bucks, do the math. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it depends on how much multipliers you're putting in there and what kind of math we're talking about. But anyway. Uh, it, right. I, okay. I paid probably 150 for it okay. when you divide up everything I got. Yeah. You're braver than me. I wouldn't even be able to tell for sure it was Amber. So you're, you're eons ahead of me. Oh. You would have known this was Amber because this lady's booth was packed full of Amber. Everything was from Poland and she, she was from Poland, um, but moved to the United States. So she has access, um, access to these artisans that still make this stuff there. And um, it's all Baltic Amber and it, her booth, I couldn't walk away from it. It was gorgeous. Just, Big, chunky, like big, chunky pieces of amber. So I trusted the source. That helps. Yeah, that helps for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you go ahead and start. I'm going to mute myself quick. So we're talking Victorian jewelry, which was named after Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom, whose reign lasted from 1837 to 1901. There you go. And the Victorian period can be divided into three periods which was the early, mid, and late. The first was the early, it was called the Romantic period, and that was between 1837 and 1860. The mid was called the Grand, which was between 1860 and 1885. And late was called the Aesthetic, which was between 1885 and 1901. But you'll see a lot of overlap of the designs in this period. So the early period was like I said, the romantic, and it was inspired by nature and love, and it had delicate designs such as flowers, metalwork folded into like foliage, hearts, bows, cameos, and serpents. And the symbolism was important. For instance, snakes represented eternal love. This piece on the left, you can see, is a really nice representation of the bows and the heart. Um, it's got the great clasp that we'll talk about later that you'll be able to, you know, relate to that time period. It, they did M. Tremblant, M. Tremblant. I, I don't think I'm pronouncing it right. Tremblant. And that just means to tremble. That's the French term for tremble. And I think we all know what a trembler is. It has these little springs on some of the pieces. And when the person moves, they kind of bounce around. So these were popular in that 1837-1860 period. Another thing that was popular was the chatelaines. These are some of my favorite pieces. I don't know why, but I just am intrigued by these. They, they basically had things that they used every day throughout the day hanging on them. The women, you know, women were busy. They would tie them to their belt hooks and then the chains would hang from their waist and they would hang things like keys and scissors and thimbles, watches and tools. And they became especially popular in the 1840s to the 70s time frame, but by the late Victorian period, around the 80s and 90s, uh, the use started to decline. And at, you know, as fashions changed and it evolved to more of a streamlined look, less bulky accessories. However, they remained a functional item for sure for women in the early 20th century. 
the other thing is they weren't only practical, but they served as a symbol of the wom woman's role in managing the household. And some were elaborately decorated to reflect the bearer's wealth, the wearer's belt, bleh, the wearer's wealth or their social status. And a lot of these were in sterling as well. So the mid-Victorian period became more of a heavier, darker side. Um, it, they had elaborate pieces. Mourning jewelry became common, especially after Prince Albert's death in 1861. Mourning jewelry dominated this period, often using jet, onyx, and black enamel. And cameos, intaglios, and classic revival motifs like Greek and Roman designs were popular. And then the late period, the jewelry became lighter and more whimsical, reflecting a return to elegance and beauty. And when I think of the late period, I think of the lavaliers. There, there's more colorful gemstones incorporated in this time frame, and the rise of Art Nouveau began to influence their designs. Again, a lot of these designs overlap each other in periods in the early 1900s. This is the piece I found this weekend that it took my breath away when I seen it because I was, I don't think I've ever found one. Let's put it that way. And when I seen it, she said it was this lady's, um, she was selling it for this other lady. And um, the lady said it was really old. And I knew it was as soon as I looked at it. I don't know how to describe that I knew it was old. I mean, it's, they make reproductions of this type of thing nowadays. But if you look at the back, they they almost look like they're like a smooth, they almost look like they're gold. I tested this one and it's not sterling, which I was a little bit surprised about. And the chain, the chain was real fine. But if you look at it closely, like I zoomed in here, it's a Greek key. I believe that's a Greek key design. And you don't see that kind of a chain in that small on the newer pieces. They're usually cable chain or something more simpler. But the elaborate detail work and the beautiful pinkish cameo with this beautiful um, design on it, it was different. And she's looking to the left, which is a little more rare. Um, but I don't ever recall seeing this particular cameo design. So I knew that was older. A lot of things hair. attributed. Her hair is. Yes. The flowers mm -hmm. in her hair, the um, the stones looked different. It's hard to see the, the, you know, the real thing when you're looking at these pictures, but it was, it's a great piece. And not saying that it's worth $500. It's not. It's probably, my guess is $100, uh, maybe even less. But to find a piece like this, you can go on first dibs, and a lot of these are sterling and gold, but they'll sell for thousands. These are um, lavaliers. So this piece obviously is not, so it's not going to sell for as much. What do you but think I the cameo is made out of? It. You know, I haven't even looked at it that close. Um, we're going to go to the through this period. And at the end, I talk a little bit about cameos, about a particular type of cameo, but I don't think that the, that's what this is. They made them in, in shell and some type of um, like glass powder. So I believe this is probably the, the glass powder just pressed into a mold. So they also used birds, insects, stars, and back here, I had a piece, I showed a piece. This necklace, I think, kind of overlaps both periods because it has some stars in it. So here's a glass paste. I love this piece. It, it's a almost Art Nouveau. It's a cross between Victorian and Art Nouveau. They call it Pate de Vera, Vera and it's a glass paste. What they do is they ground up glass and then they add pigments to it and then they pour it into a mold and fused into the, their shape. 
So that's what I think that one was. Materials that you'll see during this time period are nine karat gold, 15 karat gold, 18 karat gold, and it's often yellow or rose, rose gold. And silver was widely used, especially for less expensive pieces. Enamel, um, they use a gouache and black enamel. That was pretty common, especially in the morning jewelry. Tortoise shell and gutta percha were used for lightweight pieces. Jet is a black fossilized wood and it's used in the morning jewelry mostly. And ivory and coral were popular for carvings, especially cameo. And I don't believe that that one was either ivory or coral. The stones that they used, they used diamonds, particularly, particularly in engagement rings and important pieces. Amethyst, it was a favorite because of the royal purple hue. Opals, they used it for their mysterious play of color and it was ble believed to bring bad luck by some. And that's my birthstone. So I, that's maybe why I've had bad luck all my life. I'm just kidding. T um, turquoise, often paired with pearls, seen as a symbol of protection. And garnets were popular for their deep red color, often used in cluster settings. Pearls, both natural and faux pearls, were popular for their elegance. And coral was favored for its vibrant color and believed to have protective properties. The precious stone from the Romantic period was often cut in a rose cut, old mine cut, or a cabochon. Clasps, I'm gonna show you the difference in the clasps here. They use C clasp, box clasp, pin stems, and T bar pins. So this is a C clasp. They're usually handmade hand hammered. Some of them are kind of flat, but this is a rounded one and it's handmade. Box class, here's some variations of box class from early time. And they were the most secure. They used them on bracelets and necklaces. Pin stems, they were usually long and often extruded past the end of the brooch, which is typical for that era, as you see here. And on here is a, one of the flattened C classed. And T bar stems. You'll see here um, a T bar with the hinge in between that is not seen anymore. I can't rule that out 100%, but it's, it's very untypical for it to be seen nowadays. But this is a good sign that it's late 1800s or early 1900s on any piece. And a couple other pieces you might see, these are more of the, not the late 1900s, I have that wrong. Yeah, late, late 1800s into the mid 20th century. That makes sense. And the spring rings are popular on necklaces. So we're going to look at eBay sold. Carrie's got that put together, I assume. And we're going to look at the value they had. They are highly collectible. People do seek these out. And you're, the condition is going to be based on wear and tear of the piece, if it's missing any stones or if there's metal damage, um, if it's rare, if it's a unique design. And the materials that it's made out of, like jet mourning pieces or rare gemstones, they command higher prices. Where it was made, the provenance pieces with a documented history, especially if tied to historical events or figures, can be more valuable. And the materials, jewelry made from gold or high quality or gemstones are going to be more valuable, obviously. And they usually range between 100 and 500, but on eBay, they're probably going to be less. You can probably sell that. on um, first dibs or Ruby Lane or something like that and probably get higher prices for them. 
probably in some pieces even go in the thousands. So you just never know. I agree with that. Um, and I don't usually show the stuff that's all, um, what do you say, the like with gold in it, because then we then we kind of it's hard to tell the difference between like what was the gold value and what was the aesthetic value. So I try to stay away from that. But just know that obviously if your piece is gold, it's going to be even more than what we have here. So um, I also think people lie a lot. People use the word Victorian in their jewelry listings a lot when they are not Victorian at all. So we just have to be smart when we when we're shopping to know the things that like Lynn pointed out. Um, all the items that I show today are sold on eBay, so they aren't just listed. Um, the first set of things I had pulled up was the Chatelaines. I also really love Chatelaines. Um, you can still find them out there. These are really nice, exaggerated, long ones, but you can also find small Chatelaines that aren't very long. Um, they're still called the same. They still have good value, but they aren't um, always as high as this. But this one's a really nice Chatelaine brooch. I do like them. I think that they, they're made in all different kinds of um, pieces. This one was probably my favorite, even though it didn't bring the highest price. Um, it has some check glass little flowers. And so it got a little pulley for the Chatelaine part. This probably is pushing it. It probably wasn't like a functional Chatelaine, really. I don't know that we really, but the time period looked correct on it. And it had lots of color popping out of it. So I really liked it. This one... People keyword spam Victorian a lot. Um, so this is a Chatelaine belt. It's hard to see all the pieces, but it has the parts hanging off of it. The hinges are correct for, for an older time period. It has the buckle there. I I get a lot of old buckles and I still list them, even if they are just one piece even, because people make things out of them. Just make sure you're representing them correctly and you, you can do fine on it. I love getting old buckles. Here's another Chatelaine um, lipstick token holder and a compact. This is probably about like um, anything else. If you do buy it now, probably would have brought more money. There's the, the maker on that. Uh, I get compacts with that name on it. Quite often, actually. I think I listed one yesterday. That Richard Hudnut. I do love the period here. I think this one was probably the neatest one. It was very detailed. It had lots of little things hanging from it. Lots of little fobs. Carrie, I'm, I'm looking for a, a sewing one. If you ever see a sewing one, I've just let them. me know. I'll buy it. I want a sewing one so bad. So here's a sewing Here tool. Fund. Isn't yeah. that funny? And then look at the price. I thought, <laughs> that was next. Yes. Oh no. Five ninety nine ninety. But yes, I I was like, there's, see, there's I the shoe up. hook. Yeah. Yep. And there's the else, shoe hook. And what else do they have in there? I don't know. They look like everything that could be used to poke somebody's eye out with. Yeah, like a knife. However, I will say in reading um things about the jewelry history, like I I like to do. And um, that actually was part of what Chatelaines lots of times were used for. There would be something that they could use for self-defense in the Chatelaine. And I imagine you take a good, you know, one of those to the eyeball and you're probably got a good shot of running away. Um, then we have a period of, so I find lots of little coin token jewelry and they always sell really fast. I don't think I've ever had any sell this high obviously because I have a hard time telling sometimes if things are fake or if they're I don't know I think I need to get over my next step in selling jewelry is to gain the confidence to like when I know I have something good to say I know it's good and I just ride the fence on it too hard but this look, is a good example of look how they spelled necklace mm -hmm. yeah and it still sold that high imagine if and it then their new seller still brought $300 so Oh um, my gosh. I mean, love tokens. <laughs> I looked at that and I'm going, what is a necklace? And <laughs> probably the same thing when people spell the brooch wrong. I, yeah. I see that all the time or jewelry wrong. Yeah. Um, 
So I find these were really good. This was these deep dives are always good for me because I always realize how much I don't know. Um, it's a good gold filled little seed. I think it's got a little seed bead in there. Um, you know, gosh, I run across these. I don't think about putting them up for three hundred twenty nine bucks. So that's well, that's my another thought. thing. In the older jewelry, you'll see a lot of gold filled stuff. So you might want to test it because there's a lot of that. Yep, there is. And I, I've i melted more than I care to uh, admit to. This says it's a Chatelaine. I guess I could kind of maybe see it, but I don't really know. Um, It's a little mesh purse. Hang, yeah, they did hang them. Well, mm -hmm. they did hang them on their Chatelaines, them little per coin purses. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty neat. Um I really am shocked that we don't use the word filigree more in some of these titles. I would think that these all have a lot of great filigree in them. But that's a very nice piece. Um I have not found one that nice. Usually when I find them they're all beat up and got lots of problems by the time I get to them. This was a French Victorian peacock eye glass pendant. Um and this almost is, it's almost reminiscent of just the little dangles that you have. Um, I don't know. It was really a cool coloring. I don't know that I could for sure say that that was the time period. That's might what be, I'm questioning. That. Might, might be. Um, and I actually included some of that in this because as buyers, as sellers, we need to be able to know what is and what isn't and not just what people tell us. So... If I was to go, I would not have labeled this Victorian. That's just me. Um, maybe if I saw it closer up, maybe I would I would think different. It might have that vibe. Say it, Victorian style. Yeah, Victorian revival. That's a good keyword. Oh. I don't think that one was made then. Um, this is a great brand. If you, the only downside I see to this, um, and one picture sold for $359, guys. Don't even get to see the back. Just got to. Just got to cough it up. Um, is there's lots of jewelry that gets um, branded as this brand, and it's not. I think a lot of um, things get attributed to the Michael Negrin stuff, and it's it's just not. So not everything that is in this style is, and I see lots of auctions incorrectly, in my opinion, say that. So just watch out for it. Don't blindly buy it because they say it is. Make sure you know what it's what's supposed to look like. Um, this is an antique Victorian French paste glass, 800 silver dangle necklace. One thing that um, Suzanne and I were just talking about was that, you know, the sterling is not worth a lot right now, right? So it's just really not. So a lot of these things have the value, not from the metal of it being sterling or 800, which is even less silver than than sterling, but it's in the provenance of, of the, the time and the the intricacy of the craftsmanship because realistically you melt lots of the stuff down and it's not um, somebody we know had just gone to a show and they were getting told, well, you know, I could get more, more for that and melt, you know, they kept saying that to them. Well, not really, not sterling, not right now. Um, gold, maybe um, there's lots of really, that, really great jewelry being melted. That one is a good, I have a train going by right now. I don't know if you can hear it, but we can't hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the this is a real good example of it the metal is always real thin pressed if it's mm -hmm. thick it was made in a mold but you can see the fine details yep. of the thin metal that they worked yep yep it was a very good example and it's got the bows throughout it which you will see in lots of those necklaces they'll have little bows um through it's got the like a thumb class type of the spring ring right there so I really like this one. I think it, I think it was of the right period. Um, but yeah, when you just be careful when you get told constantly, like, "Why well, can you get more melt?" Yeah, not really, not in sterling right now. So, this also was labeled as a French Victorian paste and sterling necklace. Um, something else, like you might want to just think about when you are a seller, or um, is like this was the same. This one wasn't, but like if you see a seller that incorrectly states what something is once. Then people kind of question whether you know what you're talking about in future listings. So just be careful not to label something just because you saw somebody else label it that way. I see that all the time. Like, well, I saw it on eBay and it said it was. Yeah. 
This one does look older. It is sterling. And lots of rhinestones during that time period are yellowy now. And th that's kind of accepted by collectors, I feel, don't you, Lynn? I mean, like, they just do, they yellow with time a little bit. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I notice in, like, Victorian jewelry, they don't use a whole lot of clear. They use mm -hmm. more pinks and and Green. colored stones. Mm -hmm. Some There's a time where it's, like, bold colors of blues and reds and greens like emeralds and sapphires but there's also that the, the time period where it's pinks and pastel colors mm -hmm. yep for sure so tell me that if you would have known to price this at 475 dollars oh heck no you know like i could have torn a piece of my hair out and thrown it in there if that's what brought the extra money like i don't know this well, this to me this this locket was not it's a nice it's not older even... monogrammed locket. There, I was wondering if it. They don't even have sterling in the title, but most of the, them would be sterling or gold. I think it was probably then, sterling, but I mean, filled. milk price on that sterling is not much. That's not where the bulk of that value is coming from. Yeah, but it's that is a, a big part. You know, it's two inches, a little over. But still, like, oh my gosh. And if it's because it says morning, like, gosh, that could have been like 2024 hair. You don't know. So this one kind of, but that one baffled me a little bit because I definitely wouldn't have been getting that money for that. I don't think I would have missed out. Um, I love this one. Super detailed um, silver vermeil. This is a very, in my opinion, she has good stuff. Uh, I don't usually see her stuff mismarked. She, she has very nice nice things in her store i do think um when i looked at this i do think it's probably the right period i mean it's old for sure yeah it has some stars that's mm -hmm. more the the last I've seen period this type of jewelry thrown out because like the smaller pieces because they think they're missing stones where those pits are and it's not it's just really nice metal work it's just different And lots of that old jewelry gets thrown out because the stones are yellow. And, you know, back then, I mean, that just happened. They're really old. It's going to happen sometimes. Um, this lady sells a lot of jewelry. She's always sold a lot of jewelry. Um, I think this brought, I mean, this was just kind of the whole package. Um, the chain is very detailed. The locket's very detailed. Those book chains bring good money anyway, I feel like. Really detailed. It was just a nice piece, but that I have known to charge 500 for it? No. It would have been probably pretty ecstatic with a couple hundred out of that. So good for these people that know what they got. Like, I need to gain that confidence in my world because I don't have it. Um, this was the Antique Victorian Pools of Light Orb Floral Metal Pendant Crystal Ball Necklace. And it was sold with an authenticity guarantee. Um, I would like to know who they have at eBay that's going to authenticate that. Is it the same guy that's going to tell me if it's gold or not? Like, how, I don't know. Like, what are you authenticating in that piece? That it's well, actual pool, Victorian? Well, pools of light. If, if they're drilled, they're not a pool of light. Correct. So that's saying, the only so thing. Are, so what yeah, are they authenticating on that? Are they saying it's a real pools of light? Are they saying it's Victorian? I don't know. That stuff kind well, of I wonder. Me. I wonder if it did go through it anyway, because it looks like they took a best offer. Well, and it's, it's not totally based on price, from what I understand. If you you have to choose for it to go through until like it's not I don't think it's five hundred. I've never had I, anything go. Well, mine automatically came up when I list had it listed, like I didn't have the choice to click on it. It automatically but you came had up. yours under fine, right? No. Or was it? But it was over a thousand, right? It was over a thousand, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I think that yeah, was automatic. I think you have the option under certain other ones. But I just wonder, like, okay, you send this to eBay. What are they authenticating, and who's doing it? Like, do we have Victorian experts? I don't know. Those things. They kinda... must have a jeweler, right. I would think. Well, I think they have jewelers, but it's different saying something's gold, silver, amethyst, right. whatever. And if it's a time period, I don't know, that kind of bothers me.
this was amazing. But what a necklace this is. Again, I don't think I would have known that I could get much money out of it. Wow. That's awesome. But it is really nice. Yeah. yeah. But this is where I miss out because I don't see I'm a list this for almost seven hundred dollars. Like maybe I do once I Google lens it or I look it up, but I don't know. That stuff's amazing to me. Um, this was pretty amazing to me. Amazing. Um, I have trouble. I don't know how to tell jet from the fact that I have black beads. I don't really know. Um, isn't it where you can scratch it on the undone ceramic bottom and it leaves a black mark? Isn't that how you're supposed to test it? I don't know. There's jet. There's gutta percha. I don't know the differences between them yet. Well, I don't either. So mine would have been black beads. Plus, I don't. It's that confidence thing. So I'm working on on my confidence. It makes it makes sense though, because if you scratch it and it leaves a little bit of a black mark, it's it's like wood, and the gutta mm -hmm. percha is a tree, so that would make sense that it would. Leave What's a the mark. difference between gutta gutta percha and jet, or is it the same thing? Gutta percha is the actual tree name, and jet um, is the product. Um, Suzanne, what is jet? I can't remember. I thought it was, um, from what you just now showed, I thought it was, uh, you were saying it was wood, but maybe it's not. I, Here's I think it is. I think that's what you said. And I know it's old. I, I, I don't know how you tell it, though. I don't know either. So maybe we should figure that out and do a call someday because I'm, I miss out on that because I'm not confident in that either. So, um, I think I got about some hat pins from that big buy I have, and there's some that are really cool looking. So this was interesting to me to be able to look at these hat pins. Um, I don't like shipping hat pins because I feel like I'm going to stab some poor postal service worker, but, um, they're pretty neat. And this was like a blue glass square. And um, lots of them were made out of brass during that time, but there was lots of gold filled too. But I mean, there was lots of brass, nice brass. Um, this one was very cool. It had like little marble on each end and the metal work. And there's something about once you handle enough pieces, like I don't know how to describe the way that that flat metal is, but you kind of get used to when you see that and it just looks, it just, it's old. And I, it's hard to describe how you know that, but you kind of just get to know that with, and the way that those, cla those claps are on the end, like they kind of just always look different. I know I'm not a very good teacher. I'm like, I don't know. You just know. And it looks old. Janine said jet is a coal product. So maybe that's why it would leave that black mark on the bottom of the cup. I don't know. I've never done it. I should, I guess. There's the seed pea, the seed bead, um, little pearls. Very, that one's pretty intricate. I have a couple. I, You know me. I was just going to like throw them in a lot or something. But I had a couple that were really neat. And I think I have some that are Bakelite. So I'm going to end up testing them. That one was really neat. Um, I definitely think this one would have brought more money. I'll buy it now. And that first picture doesn't showcase that gem on top very well. But, you know, lion stuff brings good money anyway. Very detailed. Very neat. Like this is the kind of stuff if I was ever going to get into collecting that I would keep. It's just neat. Um, this one was also pretty neat. It's clear and emerald green. She always just this person always just takes pictures wherever they happen to be and they they do fine with them. This was kind of neat. Um it was a lot and it had, I imagine that that looked kind of coralish, but look at that, that glass. It's like iris glass. And a lot of those hat pins, maybe not for Victorian, but maybe a little bit later, had the, do have Bakelite ends on them. Like it wouldn't shock me if those were Bakelite. I don't think they're coral. Maybe they are. This is why you don't see me on, you know, like widespread YouTube doing uh doing things like this because I just don't know certain things. 
I have some like this. So this one shocked me the most out of the hat pins because I have some of those little dog dog ones that are exactly like this and would never have thought to price them this way. Is this just because, I don't know, what am I missing? Am I missing something on this? I don't know. That bubble glass, it's almost like the... Oh, the Essex? It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, it's it's reverse carved. That Yeah, I think that's what it is. So I haven't and everybody put mine loves up yet. dogs. Yeah, I haven't put mine up yet, but I thought, hmm, maybe I'm going to price that higher than I thought. Yep, Essex Crystal Dog, yep. I just didn't know. Don't I worry, have a I couple probably... horse pins, a horse and a brooch mm -hmm. Essex pin listed, and I finally had to lower the price on them. They didn't, they're not selling for over a hundred dollars right now. Well, that one did, but, but that it's one a apparently dog. is. Yeah. This was a creepy, realistic horse. Well, no horse looking like it's going to bite me with red eyes. Little devil horse. Devil That's pretty horse. Pretty neat. It kind of does. It's got big old sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. They um horses don't like me. I'm saying. I've only been around a couple and they both bit me. There's another little dog one. And it's also an Essex crystal, but this one's 14 carat, 250 bucks. But look at that little dog. I probably would have melted it. You guys all hate me. Probably take it to go buy or melted it down. Everything in mine that's 14 carat lately has just been getting melted. I won't even show you some of the cameos I've popped out. Uh look at that little bug. Like, I don't know. I I um I don't even think this says that it's like gold or anything. So this one, um, yeah, three hundred and fifty dollars. So this bug happened. Hey, I'm always telling you guys insects sell, right? I'm always saying that, but wow. He is pretty cool. And this one is a, uh, so I would have said that I would have called this Gulio. Should I have been wrong? No, you're right. No, you're right. Looks like that to me. Um, so it was like $409 in, um, in U.S. dollars. And now I'm thinking I shouldn't throw away all those cool cases that I have from that lady. They all look ratty and gross, but maybe people want them. So all the yes, cases I do. got from her have like where you push the little pin in on the side. And that's how the jewelry cases pop open is the little old pin that you push. Mm -hmm. And I've been throwing them away. Well, I, I just seen they're... some at the P Pickers Market that were little, like just small mm -hmm. ones, that were $30. Yeah, and these are big. I should probably not throw them away. Um, Those are pretty cool. The... Yeah, Janine, I, I throw away lots. Of, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I do. I throw them away. Um, Pretty cool cameo bracelet. I don't know that I've ever seen one quite like this. They're all like usually you get ones like these and like one's missing or one's like not cool or or like only one's actually carved but the rest are like flat or whatever. But these are all really neat. It doesn't does the metal on the back look it doesn't look super old though. But maybe you just can't see it up close because the front I mean the pieces look old. They might have shined it up. Yeah, that might be. I leave things kind of ratty. I want them to look old. Plus, I don't want to clean them. You see a lot of the um, snakes. I've noticed they're little serpents. That one, the one necklace that you showed at the beginning of your slideshow. If you looked really close, the very ends were serpent heads, and that that was really neat. That like made the necklace. I thought. Of course, whenever I see hmm. these, I always just think Whiting and Davis, but. This one obviously isn't, but always makes me think of those. I find those all the time. So I had a question about this. So these have the little, they called this, uh, what do you call it? Mine cut diamond link bracelet. 
um, lion's head. So very cool. But I get I have a couple little pins that have that exact pattern in them, or they look like a cluster brooch almost with just made of these exact little star medallion things that look like a gold filled face. And I haven't been listing them individually, but now I wonder maybe I should. Because they do look pretty old. I would. And they have yeah, two, I definitely so would. small that I'm like, who wants to pay for a little bitty brooch like that? But I have to get over that because sometimes the little small things that are really old do okay. But that was a pretty cool bracelet. $850. Pretty good price. This was really neat too. Um, Hungarian. It says it's circa 1870. We must know their stuff, but wow. Very nice. What's I know, the I need little to... chain on it? The little safety chain? Little... It looks like it was oh, a bracelet. Chain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was thinking ring. It looks like a ring at first. It did. Yeah, it's an old safety chain. I think it's broken. That is pretty. It is very pretty, but I wouldn't have guessed that price, though. That's pretty impressive. This one was, um, so I did include that, even though it's 15 karat with diamonds, just because of the fine, you know, enamel work. And I also thought this was a ring. I did, so too. There it's shown. I'm not sure why. It's there, that's the only picture I see so far. It looked like a bracelet. That one does. But just such vibrant colors in the enamel. I wonder if it's really small. Is it really small? People were smaller back then. There was no doubt about that. Those baby tooth pearls look replaced. Yeah, I would agree. That last one. They looked very white and clean. And pearls get aged to them too. And that's okay. Like I think sometimes people chuck them because they're like, oh, they look gnarly. Yeah, well, when they get really old, sometimes they look a little gnarly. Um, This one I thought was something that could have got by me too um i mean obviously i would have kept it it looks pretty neat but that's not a very big i mean it's not the silver making it bring 295 dollars wow yep i don't think i would have known to do that this one's the same way um i have a bunch of little ones like this owl crescent ones and they've got where you can tell they're really old because of how the stones are set and i just think I just don't, I guess I just don't price them up because I think they're so tiny. Like who really is going to pay for that? But they've got the two pinches and the, and the, or the, that kind of hinge in it. Maybe I should be paying more attention. This one was neat. It had the griffin on it and it's a sash. It's a sash pin. Anything with griffins on it seemed to do well. I feel like that are old. That they did a good job. Like the one you sold. Mm hmm. Mine didn't have the griffin, though. That was probably the cool factor. And it is signed mm -hmm. there. Mm hmm. Mine was not signed. Here's another dog. Man, we need to just get into the dog jewelry because I'm telling you, people will pay to have their little dog. It is old. And it is pretty detailed and clear. See that etching? It's pretty neat, but wow, three hundred dollars. Somebody got that for a gift, I bet. Who has that dog? Here's another one of the coins, you know, the faux coins that we see, and it is signed. Pretty neat. There's a signature on the back. This one was pretty interesting, too, to me. It was a Victorian Scottish agate sterling silver garter pebble brooch pin. I'm assuming that that's the inlay that's the pebble brooch part. That's a very long pin. It looks age-appropriate. Sorry, I'm off track. I'm like, this is really cool. And then I'm like, you know, I think I listed that. So that's mine. So then it makes me go, hmm. 
Yeah, because it's all beat up and it's kind of cruddy. I listed it anyway. So she had a lot of this kind of stuff, but this one was more of the, this was probably one of the nicer ones, I guess, but as far as That's old. cool. I was like, hey, I think I should go check that one out. Um, There's a Celtic, which I didn't know that, I guess I wouldn't have known the age on this. That's why I included this one. So it's a Celtic Victorian pin. I don't know that I would have known to age it this way. And it brought really good, decent money too. But maybe just the construction. But that one That's also too, wasn't, wasn't very big. You know? Um, in mm -hmm. here. I love, 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 love those bright enamels. That is cool. And birds. People love birds. And the little sea bean curls. Yeah. It's definitely old. But that one is very pretty. I really like that one. Yeah, Janine. But, and then there it sits at 80-something. So people probably watch these and then go and buy, go by my store to resell stuff. Um. I think this one said it's a morning brooch, but I didn't. I got to figure out where the, it must be hair in the back. So people that don't know about morning brooches or morning jewelry, it's actually made out of hair or it's got hair in it. I don't know that I. So somebody tell me what I'm not. For one, they polished up that silver, which drives me crazy. Um, for it's another, probably in the middle. So it must be underneath that, the center piece uh, it must be. So, you know, I would feature that. Like, I'd want people to see the hair because that's what people like. But very nice. Very nice. And there's some more hair brooches coming up. I would love hair work jewelry. Um, this one says it's moonstone stuff. I'm so not sure that I would have caught that. But to see how the, the edges are built up and not, you can tell that that one's a hand worked piece. There's the back. I think these are kind of one of these things that you uh they don't Janine what do you are they just mostly for memorializing to make them morning morning pieces I don't really know um this one said putty seed pearls and I did not know what that meant anybody else know because I don't know no, no. It was a new word for me. Never heard of it. And there was a couple in here included because they had things I didn't understand and I thought people could teach me. This one was pretty neat. Pretty well set. Imagine how much time it took to set each one of those. Very cool. I did see somebody breaking one of those the other day on a site because they were trying to straighten that out right there. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. It's supposed to be like that. That was a very cool little landscape scene. 550 bucks. How neat is that? Little painting. Mm-hmm. Dean said it's usually just based on time period style materials. A morning piece is just a remembrance piece. Sometimes includes a hair photo. That makes sense. I do think that gets keyword spammed a lot, though. This is a micro mosaic. So people throw around that word a lot, micro mosaic. And most of the time it's not. This one is, I think. Um, but boy, that gets thrown around a lot, that word. And, um, but this is true, true artwork there. I saw a really big one once. They had a price of like $7,000, but it was just cool to see. So this one is a, um, a tassel mesh bracelet. And you can see, I you still find those once in a while. Yeah, I've bought several of them, like fifteen bucks a piece, mm -hmm. not too long ago. And they remind me of the watch, old watch, mesh watch bobs. I listed some of them yesterday. I forgot to include them. I was going to throw some of them pictures in. I love old watch bob things. So this is a buckle. Again. Um, Sometimes even if I find one piece of this, I'll still list it and I'll just list it cheap and people buy it for, to put in there. I don't know what they do with them, but I still list them even if I only find one piece of the buckle. 
That's There's your Guda meat. Percha. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which it's I more like of. matte. It has mm -hmm. more of a matte color to it. The jet's usually like pretty wood. shiny, right? Is the jet usually pretty shiny? I think so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That looks more like wood to me right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I'd never heard of, I learned that from you today. So thanks, Lynn. No problem. I won't be able to remember it next week, but. <laughs> me neither. I'll at least know I I've heard of it. <laughs> I was surprised at how much Scottish, like Scottish um, joy that I found in this, um, found in this. I should take a poll on how many people are cleaning their beautiful silver. I love the patina on old silver. This I thought was a really neat lot. But I guess I can't see everything real close, but I think this was actually pretty on the cheap side. I was going to say, I wouldn't have sold that for that price. I would be really crying. That's, fairly, that's an old watch bob chain. Or old watch chain, anyway. That looks like an old Gouliosh piece, maybe. At least it's old enamel. It's got a neat box. I love that gear. Yeah. The like, casket I would have in that. there was cool. Yep. Unless, unless that didn't come with it. Oh, it yeah, does say it trinket did. case. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was a steal of the deal. Yeah, it is. There's the antique Tiffany box. Wow. I feel like this one's cheap, too. But, you know, we can't go by the market. This, I mean, the guy just asked $95 and got $95. So it could have gone for more, even though it was damaged. It was a pretty old Tiffany case. This one was cool, too. Um, I'm not sure how old it is, but it is a cool box anyway. It's pretty finely detailed. Um, so this word came up a lot. What does that mean? The Petra Dura. Is that just how it's inlaid? I have no idea. Probably. I think that's, that's an, a type of inlay. That's one of those, Suzanne, that I've heard of before and can't remember. <laughs> well, me too. And then I thought, I think it had to do with the inlay, but what do I know? Um, yes. Oh, that's the inlay this. technique. It's inlay technique. That's what I thought. This was a that's hair work hair. piece. That we Ooh. saw with scan um, when we were looking at the Scandinavian jewelry. Yeah, that to me would not be very clean. I don't know. These little lockets. When I did um, when I did that locket um, call the one time, these little lockets, depending on what they are, can can do very well. And they don't really necessarily have to be in perfect condition either. No. Nope. This one, I think, on a buy it now would have brought more money. I would have listed that probably at three hundred. Take an offer at two fifty. It was pretty well done. Um, pretty good, pretty good shape too. That's very pretty. Uh, Janine says Petra Dura is a mosaic of semi-precious stones set into a floral pattern of black marble or onyx, also known as hard stone mosaic. Perfect. See, I learned something. It's funny how much I learn every time we do one of these, like things I thought I knew that I didn't know. Um, what a cool scarab type thing this is. And look how blue that stone is. I think this is a fabulous brooch. This is something I would have kept if I was collecting. Which I'm not going it's to start. handmade. Yeah, gorgeous. just gorgeous. The base might be pressed, but all the details are... Handmade. Yeah, just awesome. This one I thought was pretty cool too, just to know that etch work. And there's something about that, I don't know what you call it, that some of those gold tones from back then had a different, almost like rose gold look to them. I have a bracelet I'm listing today that looks like that. This says it's black jet. It's a festoon. Festoon is a very good keyword. If it is um, used correctly, it's a good keyword. See how shiny that is? Yeah. It's a lot shinier than them. But it doesn't look as shiny as like onyx. Mm -mm. So it's like the it's in between. Cold. Is it cold? I don't know. I don't know. 
So these bother me too, guys. So I'll have a whole bunch of the little pins. I don't know what you call them. They're like, uh, they don't have the brooch on them, but it would like hold a watch chain, I think is what they are. But they're small and they're like this, but then they have like a heart or a leaf or something on the front of them. I don't know. You, would you list those separately or by themselves? Like, are they worth listing separately? I would. I would just because somebody might want to put it together with another piece if they're missing it. I mean, they're definitely aged. They're definitely the right age, but they're just like this part of it. And then like have a decoration, like an inlay bird. Some of them have filigree and that's just the pin. And it's got the little, I don't know, whatever you call it, divot behind it where it would hold the watch chain. But I always think who's going to pay for some that little, but I got to get, yeah, that's me. I could. They will. they will. And the little things are what got lost, right? So they're harder to find because people lost them mm -hmm. or they got destroyed. So this was a lava rock cameo. I have I don't think I've ever found a lava one. If I have, I didn't know it. Are they really lightweight or are they heavy or like what do they feel like when you find them? I've, I've never, never found seen one, I don't think. This reminded me of what was in that one pin I asked you about that one time and we weren't quite sure what it was made out of. Yeah. It had that like except I had a stone in the middle. It's sold right away, too. Hmm. Yeah, I hate that when I'm always like, I'm not sure about something. There's the acid test. Oh, boy, they really did, did a job on that. If something's nice enough for me to call it that and I'm not melting it, I'm, I just go get them tested anymore. I don't want to ruin them because I probably would ruin them. And I hate the sound. Hate the sound. Uh. This is made out of hair, guys. So people that yeah. don't know about that stuff. The germaphobe in me does not care how old the hair is. It's still hair. And could never be a hairdresser. It's pretty gross. So this is a set. So you got two pieces. I don't know that that's shown very well in the first picture. Somebody probably got a deal. Um, This one, too. This is really neat. They look like eyeballs. And it's called eye shell jewelry. Oh, wow, that was really neat. And it's a set. And again, I don't know. I think somebody got a good deal on that. Yes. You know how I would have sold it. Not like that. There's another Victorian That's morning. That's cool. With brooch spelled wrong. Mm-hmm. Just think of how much work that would be to braid that hair. That fine Op little... I understand braids and now, but... Whew. Upper curriculum. Upper culum shell. That's a new word for me today, too. I learned so much when we do this. Even when I think I'm... Which I'm not an expert on this, but even when I think I'm an expert on the category we do, I always just, like, learn so much. If everybody's bored. I don't have to show you the rest of it. Um, oh, that's great. Love that. Love that chain. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I think she could have held out for more money on that one. Oh, it's from Des Moines, Iowa, too. So Sophie's Trinkets is only 40 minutes away from me. I need to investigate that. Because I'm not finding stuff like that. Yeah. Sophie's Trinkets. I got to check that out. The new is old again. People are also close to me. That's hair. Yep. It's human hair work. Jewelry. I know when I started out, I probably threw some of that stuff away, just not knowing what it was. People's hair. Ooh. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? One picture, guys. One picture. Wow. Yeah. That is gorgeous. And a brand new seller. These confuse me sometimes. You know, these etched bangles. Yeah. They confuse me price wise. Like, am I just underselling mine or are these an anomaly? That one's really well done. I just sold some today and they're usually real fine etched, but that's deep and it's got the antiqued black in it. Oh, it's so that signed you too. can see is. See that? Yeah. I don't know what it was, but it's signed. You know, I had a, I thought it was a bacon and baits. Is that the name? Yeah. I thought it was, but apparently I was wrong. And it was one of those that somebody felt the need to write me a novel on why I was wrong. But I, uh, did I you learn anything from it? 
Not really, because I'm not so sure she's not wrong. See, it was, yeah, it was bacon and bait. Bates and bacon. That's what it was. Bates and bacon. I don't know. I probably delisted it, didn't list it again. Oh, look, here's one right here. Very cool. Uh, very well done. There, it's signed in the back, you can see. Hmm. I wonder if these people are cleaning I mean, them or if they just never, you know, some of that stuff I got from that older lady does not look age appropriate because it was so clean. I just think it was kept very nicely, um, but it doesn't look old. So it was just kept so nicely. See that locket could have got by me. You showed it twice. You shouldn't forget it now. I know. Well, it popped, it must have popped up twice at me, probably was sponsored or something. Olga's fashion has lots of this cool stuff. No, I'll forget it. Trust me. I'll forget it when I'm pricing it. And then I'll just decide mine isn't worth it. And it's... Look at that, Chatelaine. Mm -hmm. This is um, a lot like what we saw in that other necklace with the fine work. It's just kind of a smaller version of it. This was That's cool. Great. I thought this was really neat. It's got, you know, it says it's rose cut diamond, ruby, sapphire. It's from India. That's got to be new. I think it is new. I think they lied. I don't think that's Victorian. So this one had that, I saw this word come up a lot. Pulky. What does that mean? Uncut pulky. That came up a lot. I have pulky. no idea. This person has 79% positive feedback. That does not look old to me either. It does not. I don't know why it doesn't, but it I kept does. that because I wanted to know the word because I it was a new word for me. It's mean, a diamond in out. its most natural form. It's oh, uncut, that's... unfaceted, and unpolished. Mm -hmm. Now that one's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Would you guess it was $1,801 gorgeous though? No. Definitely I want to see not. the back of that. Janine, you haven't been in here long enough to know that sometimes it's really interesting when we find these. I'm like, oh, I sold that for 50 bucks. You know, that's happened a few times when I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, they came to my store and bought that. It's obviously the right. I mean, it's old. Nice workmanship. I never in a million years would have priced that at $1,800. It was amazing. There was just two people that wanted it, apparently. That was the same one. Some of these showed up in the same category. So that says it's a high relief cameo, um, lava cameo. Maybe I have found these and just don't know it. And she's got a broken nose. Look at her poor nose. She's had a rough life, man. Don't you think some of these go higher because they're hoping it's gold? Could oh, be. See, that pulky could be anything, here, yeah. just in the natural form. So, it says a Victorian pendant. Um, I think it probably is. I think it was probably just sold cheap. It's a little mirror. I mean, I could see that being hmm. the right age. I mean, it's mm -hmm. Brass, probably. It's old. I could see that hanging from a chatelaine. Yeah, I do too. This one, I just thought was pretty how it was the metalwork was so pretty around it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think this would have done better on Buy It Now too. Yeah, yeah. Those were neat. Um, Hairwork earrings. Ooh. Yep. They're a little. So hairwork reminds me a little bit of a complex spider web. another reason why they kind of creep me out a little bit that is very cool i love this it's got the i'm assuming that's human hair probably in the center and the back's obviously an older they made like a design out of it i really oh, like that okay. see how it's like a i'm not sure what they were going for but they put some work into it molding their dead people's hair here's another one I'm not sure about the title, guys, but 
you know, that looks like it's starting to fall apart, like the, the hair's mm -hmm. starting to disintegrate, doesn't it? Disintegrate. Yep. I think the air and stuff probably got to it. Victorians had lots of their time on their hands and minimal supplies to weave hair. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, you know. Not me. I probably would have been the one scrubbing the bricks on the hearth or something, but that's another one of the embossed ones that I don't know. I never know how to price those. There, it's signed too. Right there. And that's another one of those book chains. Beautiful chain. And a pretty cool little center. I bet that's coral, mm -hmm. don't you? Yeah, it looks probably like a it. good chance. Probably a good chance that's coral because it's got the different tones oh, of the that orange. Is mm -hmm. Probably more than one hundred twenty nine dollars. Pretty. Yeah, that was probably a really good deal. This one surprised me, and I guess it's because it's gold filled, and, and it does. I do think it's older, but um, yeah, maybe not. I mean, it's got a lot of cool I stuff on wheels and lockets, and yeah. That one was neat. That's beautiful. But that first picture does not do it justice. Mm -mm. Just look at it like that. It doesn't look near as impressive. So these little, um, I get lots of these, but they the things are broke off the corners. But I listed them anyway, individually, and they sold. I never would have thought that. Like, And I put big in the listing. The lady even contacted me. I'm like, there's nowhere to hook it on at. I couldn't get it open because I didn't want to break it. But you could tell it was a locket. It had the hinges on it. And she's like, I just love it. Like, she's like, it just looks very old and historical. And I'm like, well, there's nowhere to attach anything to it. She's like, well, I'll just, I'll put it inside. She was going to put it inside of a clear locket. It, I don't know. I went out on a limb and went ahead and listed them, but it was cool. And it might've been gold filled too. I don't really know. I didn't test it, but there's a micro, there's their Petra Dura. The little bird. People like birds too. Dogs and birds. People like bird, bird jewelry. Um, this one said it was a Victorian revival. So I just wanted to list, uh, um, show you one that like isn't, I don't think it is at all, but um, it looks using, like a regular slide bracelet. Mm -hmm, using the keyword Victorian revival is probably what got them the higher price though. Kind of like Egyptian revival. I thought this lot, um, you know, it went probably more on the, it might be a little on the high side, but look at the little vegetable cart. I would have been buying this just, I mean, it had some cool stuff in it. It definitely was it not. It's like amber in there. Yeah, it does. I very much like the vegetable cart. The vegetable what? I think it's a little vegetable cart. A little cart oh, of vegetables. Cart. Maybe it's a okay, flower yeah, pot. That, that's I don't gorgeous. know. Whatever that's it is, gorgeous. I thought it was neat. But very cool lot. It was a neat lot. That other lot that we looked at. They got, really they got, they got, yeah, they got, this one I believe is new. So this was, you can't have a new Victorian piece. That was a, don't do that guys. This was a very cool cameo. It has a big crack in it, but I just like seeing the different faces. And I, in the, I mean, some, you know, people buy the ones with the cracks in it. They just, as long as they know they have a crack in it. I got one return the other day that said that it was acrylic cheap plastic and not shell like I had described, but it is completely translucent and is has a sh crack through it. And I'm like, okay, never. They used, um, I picked this one because it said morbid jewelry. I had never really heard of that. Term. Uh, well, that is. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a good keyword. That we're using morbid jewelry. How many people searched that? And this one, um, this one I listed because I was going to ask Lynn again, but I already did about like, I have a whole bunch of these little bitty ones that are um, obviously old, but I thought, well, nobody's going to pay money for that little bitty pin. And do they have tube hinges? Mm -hmm, all of them. I would list them. Definitely. I think one of them has a trombone hinge, but the rest are tube hinges. Same way with this. I have a bunch of those, you know, that are raised up like that that have the correct hinge on the back. But I'm like, who's going to buy just a regular little gold thing that have the seed pearls? They usually have little seed pearls in them. But maybe I should list them. They're nice and thick like that, too. Yeah. Why not? 
what's this word? That was another reason why I well, look at the one before. That's what I was one. I think maybe that's the person's name that that did it. Do you think? No, I don't know. Let me look T-A- it up. T a i l l e. And then D E P A R G N E. I think T. Isn't that tall? Isn't that a French word for tall? Could be wrong. Well, no, are, it's um, the black. Re, it's the black recessed enameling. Jean said. Uh, where's, the, where's the enameling? Do you see? Oh, is it inside those little? It might be right here. Deep yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. It's in the yeah. recesses of it. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's a there's good a percha. So can it That's... be jet and good to percha? Or are they keyword spamming? Well, they just don't know which one it is. I don't it can't they're different. Yeah. So That's a beautiful good. piece though. I have lots of things I don't know what it is. I don't just say, hey. There was a cool hair work jewelry. Had knots in it and stuff. Yep, keyword spamming. I'll do that. I could sell lots more stuff if I bleed in the whole like amethyst question mark. I Juliana that, question mark? Yeah, we don't know. Well, let's put our question marks in. This one I absolutely think was probably underpriced a little bit. It's pretty neat. I like this one. Beautiful. I had a lot of nice qualities to it. All right. I will quit boring you guys and 